of real value functions uh, and what are they what is addition and multiplication suppose you have since we want only this so we will take two such functions and see what their addition and multiplication mean I want to define f plus g and I want it to again be a function of this type. That means I have to define the function f plus g and my definition is this. f plus g at any element x in this domain is defined to be equal to fx plus f of x plus g of x. Like that, I want to define the product fg. And you may have realized what this one will be analogous to the previous one. The product fg at any point x in this domain is defined to be equal to the product of the values. It turns out, not that uh, it's meaningful. Okay, this plus that we have here, that's what we are defining. It's a function. Okay, and this plus is ultimately going to be a plus in this set R. Like that, this product is going to be a multiplication in this set R, on this set R. And this function at any point x is defined to be fx plus gx. Note that this plus is ordinary uh, addition of real numbers because once we have chosen x from here, from this closed unit interval, both f of x and g of x are real numbers. So their sum makes sense. Just like that, their product also makes sense. And these two functions have been defined like this. And it, it follows from calculus that both f and f plus g and fg are continuous because f and g are continuous. So we actually get two elements in R again and it can be shown that with respect to this addition as addition and this as multiplication, R turns into a ring. So we are talking about that ring. But of course we won't uh, just vaguely say it like that. I mean, we are going to refer to some result from Tau's analysis. It follows, I will just mention the relevant results and later on when we reach those stages in Tau's analysis, we will see that. That's the, I mean, we will come across the results. It follows from Example 942 and proposition 949 and just writing down, you know the reference that R is a ring. Okay, this much we leave uh, to analysis because after all, okay, the definition involves continuous functions and such things. So, automatically analysis comes in. Okay. Now, now we are going to define a function. A function from R into R by mapping a an element of R. Now an element of R is a continuous function with the domain this and range the set of real numbers. And we are defining it to be equal to the functional value 
at the point 1 by 2 because 1 by 2 is in this domain in this common domain for all the functions in R in R so this next sense that it's a real object this is not R this is the ring of real numbers okay because this one according to this definition is a real number Um, let us now see that this function is a homomorphism. It's a automatically well defined. Now, for f and g belonging to R, We have phi of f plus g. By definition, it is what f plus g of 1 by 2, which according to what we have just now defined, how to define this function f plus g, this is equal to f of 1 by 2 plus g of 1 by 2. This is ordinary addition of real numbers. This is the addition in the ring R. And this again is nothing but phi of f plus phi of g. And now you can understand what will happen with multiplication. Same thing with uh, multiplication in place of addition. f g of 1 by 2, this is nothing but f of 1 by 2 times g of 1 by 2. This is phi of f phi of g. Hence, phi is a homomorphism. Oh, I forgot to mention that R is a ring with respect to ordinary addition and multiplication of real numbers. Note that the kernel of this homomorphism is the set of those functions in R which vanish at 1 by 2. Note that since these are real valued functions, this 0 is the ordinary real number 0. So that means if we draw, if we look at this interval 0, 1, this is the point 1 by 2. So we are um, considering all such functions which vanish at 1 by 2, which become 0 at 1 by 2 and which are continuous on this closed interval. So the graphs of the, those functions will look like this. There, there will be many, infinitely many such functions, but they will all vanish at 1 by 2 and they are continuous. And from some um, Results in calculus, you also know that such functions will have a maximum and minimum inside this closed interval. They will be uniformly continuous. Those things are there. Okay, so the kernel consists of functions with whose graphs look like this. Okay. Now, you can uh, go to the first example and see all the examples and find that they all involve only commutative rings. All the rings we have shown so far are commutative. So we can write that. Note that all the examples above have used only 
commutative rings. Many beautiful examples. Non commutative rings are there, but premature to discuss such an example. Now, we will come across them, but not now. Okay. So now, after this, we look at uh, special types of homomorphisms, namely the isomorphism. That is the injective homomorphism and subjective homomorphism, those things. So we have two definitions. A homomorphism that is one to one is homomorphism means in this context homomorphism of between two rings one to one is called an isomorphism now this usage of the word isomorphism in this context is not universal some people would call a homomorphism to be an isomorphism if it is not just one-to-one -one, but onto also. However, Hartstein decides to call one-to-one -one homomorphisms isomorphisms. And then comes the next definition. Two rings. are said to be isomorphic to each other if if there exists an isomorphism of one onto now this we additionally require the isomorphism to be onto with other then we say that the two rings are isomorphic and we have already seen I mean we are supposed to know what uh, isomorphic groups are in group theoretic sense, they are actually one and the same. There is no distinction between them group theoretically. If something happens in one group, then the exact same thing happens in the other group. For example, if um, one group is abelian, then any isomorphic copy of it would also be abelian. And everything else uh, will look the same. They are just two, uh, the same group written in two different ways or its elements are labeled in two different ways that's the only difference so those things are true for isomorphic rings also so there is a paragraph regarding that the meaning of
of the homomorphism and two rings D isomorphic to each other are just like the corresponding concept in group theory. Also, also that dilemma, what is the number? Also, Lemma 274, this is from the second chapter in group theory, um, has the following analog for rings. So this lemma in group theory is actually the one which gives us a criterion for having a I mean, for a criterion for saying when a homomorphism between two groups is an isomorphism, that thing, which involves the kernel of the homomorphism. There also we have kernel in group theory, here also we have kernel. And actually here, we are not, as far as kernel is concerned, we are dealing with a group theory kernel of it. Because inside a ring, we have the structure of an abelian group under addition. And based on that, we have defined kernel, just like how we defined in group theory. And uh, the lemma now is this. Lemma 3. This is the hard one. Let I be a homomorphism of ring R into ring R prime. Then I is an Isomorphism if and only if the kernel of phi is this set. In fact, this is just the same thing we had in group theory. If we have a homomorphism from one group G into another group G prime, then this will be a one to one mapping. If and only if the kernel of phi, is, remember, recall that this is the group theoretic notation for kernel. It consists of only the identity element in G. Now here we are dealing with additive groups, so the identity is zero. Okay. Now this ends the third section. There is no exercise in this one. Uh, then we have the fourth section which involves ideals and quotient rings. After this, there are steps of exercises. So we will see them. So next is ideals and quotient rings.